All right, a good Saturday afternoon, late Saturday afternoon, everybody into September 8th, and we are watching uh, what is still Tropical Storm Florence, which you can see it here on the satellite imagery as the sun is about to go down over the central Atlantic. Remember, they're a couple hours ahead, so they're losing daylight here a little faster than we are right now. And uh, this is going to become a hurricane pretty soon. The hurricane hunters are supposed to be coming out there right now, and I've seen some reports already. They found some pressures down as low as 988 millibars, which is probably borderline hurricane strength. So it's, if it's not a hurricane at the 5 p.m. advisor, it is probably going to become a hurricane uh, overnight tonight. And then from there, it's going to continue in, to intensify. We can add some color to this shot here um, on the IR bit here. So you can see uh, very, very clearly here the brighter colors now bursting around the center of circulation. You see, originally, a lot of them were up to the north and east of the system. That was from when it was being sheared yesterday and on Thursday, where it blew all the cloud tops off to the north and east. But the shear has now lessened. You can see big thunderstorms beginning to fire around the center of circulation. And that is a sign of a system that is trying to intensify. And I think we're going to see significant intensification over the next few days because the shear is mostly gone. The dry air that it, it, that it encountered off of Africa when it had to plow through to get up to this latitude, it's pretty much away from that. And out ahead of it are some of the warmest sea surface temperatures that you will find on planet Earth. Basically, you only have, if you go to the Western Pacific or the Western Gulf of Mexico, in this case, maybe 30, 31 degrees C uh, Celsius, which you know correlates to the mid to upper 80s here. But this 29 degrees C, which is off the southeast coast of the United States, which Florence will be going into, because remember, Florence right now is somewhere over in this area here, and it's going to be traveling south of Bermuda and up towards the southeast coast into this area over here, which has just incredibly, incredibly warm water. And this will work like hurricane jet fuel when it gets over in this area with low shear and a big high over the top, which I'll show you in a moment. And I, I mean, just ideal conditions for rapid intensification once it gets to this part of the world. If we look at the anomalies now. This is... Now, this is how much warmer or colder than you would expect the water to be at this point of the year uh, compared to climatologically. And if you look at basically from the Carolinas to New England, all of this is way above average. Some of this correlates to two or three degrees Celsius above average, which is, you know, I mean, some of that could be five degrees Fahrenheit if you look at. So and, and keep in mind, it's the second week of September, which climatologically is the warmest the waters get. In the, in the North Atlantic. So you have the warmest week of water to begin with, and then you hit a period where these waters are abnormally warm. So this is about as high of a ceiling as you could possibly have for a storm in terms of how far the intensity can get. But the sky is the limit in terms of that. And almost every single major model has this getting to at least a Category 3 by the middle of next week. Most of them have it getting to a four, and a five is possible. I don't necessarily think a five is going to happen, but I think I think a four at this point is a pretty darn good bet. We can look at the GFS model and where it's at today because it's kind of, we've kind of got uh, basically the models on each end of the envelope here. So the GFS is on the eastern envelope, uh, on the eastern end of the envelope, like it usually is. And here's our storm. Here's Florence out here in the middle of the Atlantic right now. Um, very, very well defined. This trough up here did not dig nearly as much as the models thought it would early in the week. That's going to be kicking out. So I'll roll this forward here. Uh, you see the ridge now building back over the top of it. This trough lifts out. And then this big, big, big new ridge that fits the pattern that we've seen, the huge ridging over the northwest Atlantic, takes over here between Bermuda and New England. And this is going to push the storm to the west toward the southeast coast of the United States, mostly towards the Carolinas here. And this is, again, ideal for strengthening. This is going to be a low shear, good ventilation environment as it moves into those extremely strong, uh, those extremely warm waters. Whoops, I don't need a sounding for this right now. Maybe another video. But uh, here, now this is where it gets interesting here. The GFS, now we're at day, day four and a half, hour 108, 114. What the GFS is going to do, it's going to start to weaken the ridge a little bit. And I think that's probably wrong, just based on the way this pattern has, pattern has gone. 
And also, if you have a really, really strong storm ventilating into the ridge, you can actually see it help pump the ridge even more. We saw that with Hurricane Irma last year, where a lot of the models had it going further north, and the ridge just kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. You got that Category 5, and it eventually went down, in the, and the storm eventually went down to Cuba. So I think this is probably a little bit too far to the east. But in any case, it, it is still a plausible scenario where it comes up, the ridge weakens, and then it's going to stall just to the east of Cape Hatteras. And once this stalls, storm does not go anywhere. I can run this forward now, day six, day seven, day eight, day nine, at day 10, and then finally, this is now way out in the long range of day 10. But now look at this, this is the 18th of September. This came up near Cape Hatteras way back on the 13th of September. So this is five days. Five days doesn't move very, very much. And while I think the GFS is probably wrong in the way it destroys the ridge, the one part that this model is getting absolutely right, and that I think every model is starting to hone in on, is that when the storm gets anywhere in this area, so I'm talking about anywhere from basically northern Florida to Delmarva, somewhere in this area, it is going to stall for a very, very long time. You can see this here. Here's the close-up view of the GFS room. See, here comes the hurricane. It develops into a very, very high-end Category 3, maybe a Category 4 at this point. And this is where it starts losing, starts detaching from reality, where it stalls off of Cape Hatteras and bombs it to a Cat 5. And you get a looping Cat 5. I mean, look, at this is not happening. This is absolutely bogus, this intensity right here. But, it, but the point is that it doesn't move all that much. It actually sags back to the south and southwest in the day... 8, day 9, day 10 period. Um, and this is just now, I mean, fantasy land, if you, if you look at this this thing going out uh, going out to sea. So now in this case, you say, well, Matt, that would be a pretty good solution because it doesn't actually come inland. And I would say, yeah, that, this probably is the best case scenario for the coast. But even here, there would still be major impacts in terms of beach erosion and even some surge into these area, areas because while the storm is not going to be this strong, you would still have significant water being pushed into the coast for multiple tide cycles. So there would still be pretty big impacts with this scenario. And I think this is probably on the eastern end of the envelope. I don't think this is right. It's possible, but I, 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 I would favor a track further to the west on this. So now let's go to the European model, which has a slightly different solution. Same general idea, but just a slightly different solution. And this is where, you know, this model is, this is, this is where the models, quote unquote, earn their money. Um, here you see big, big ridge building to the north. This is just incredible for the second week of September. This is, this is something you might see in July, typically. This big, big, big ridge that comes across here. And you see these nice colors are provided by Ryan Maui's site, weathermodels.com, which he's done a really, really good job uh, putting, put, putting, the, putting these maps together. I, I would recommend it if you are looking for a, a, a weather map site to track these things. They, it, it just, just The colors really, really help uh, distinguish certain features in the atmosphere that you want to look at. But in any case, here this thing pumps the ridge makes landfall a little bit north of where it did last night. You see it here in Wilmington, North Carolina, right around that area. And then, just like the GFS, it stalls it. But this one's stalling it a little bit further to the west. And this is where the consequences really, really start to pile up. Because when you get a situation where a ridge breaks down slowly over time and there's absolutely no troughs going, I'm just going to keep running this forward, this does not move and what this is going to allow to happen it is going to rain and 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 rain for days and you are talking about catastrophic flooding catastrophic flooding if this happens now again this one is in eastern north carolina eastern virginia this could easily be over georgia and south carolina it could be over the north carolina south carolina border the exact point where you're going to have this stall is very much up for debate and is going to be a very, very difficult thing to, to nail down. But with the trends today, it is becoming increasingly likely that we see a very, very long stall from the system, maybe over Delmarva, maybe over Georgia, maybe over the Carolinas, but it, it's pr you're probably going to see something of this nature. It's just a matter of where. This is the pressure model of the European. We'll run this forward just to show 
how it intensifies. The European actually deepens this at 1 point to 941 millibars, and then it must go through an eyewall replacement cycle because it actually weakens a little bit at this point, which is unlikely unless it's going through an eyewall replacement replacement cycle, but then it tries to re-intensify again. This is probably a very, very high-end Category 3 here at 950 millibars, probably not quite a 4, but I mean, it wouldn't take much more to get there. And then you can see it heading up here. So remember, this makes landfall thir late Thursday afternoon right here, 18C, Thursday, September 13th, and then watch how far we extend this forward. It just sits over eastern North Carolina and southeast Virginia. We're now on Sunday, Sunday morning, and it's still hasn't moved look it does it does it just the, the european eventually loses pressure but the rain is not going to stop if the circulation is there it's just going to keep going and going and going and going and in fact if we run this if we look at this now from the p watt standpoint this, this is this basically shows you how much water is available in the atmosphere um it's a it's a very 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 complex to fully understand basically when you get to these red and purple colors it's, oh, it's going to rain really, really hard. That's what you got to know. And as this storm comes in, you see a very, very well-defined system. This is just incredibly intense tropical rains like you'd see in any tropical system. And then it starts moving up in eastern North Carolina. Watch. Watch these PWAP values. They just sit over Virginia and eastern North Carolina. They sit there. They do not move as the storm rings itself out. Because remember, this storm is still close enough to be pulling in moisture from the Atlantic. It's not that far from the coast. So it's just going to keep raining and raining and raining. Look at this. Day 9, day 10, look, at this is the end of the run, 240, this is day 10. It's still raining at day 10. This is, this is a catastrophic flooding event if it stalls inland. Again, if the GF, you better hope the GFS is right if you, if you live anywhere between Delmarva and Georgia. Because this is, somebody in this area is going to get, uh, I mean, just a historical flood if this, if this breaks this way. Because I, I just don't see where this thing is going to go. Let's take a look at the rainfall totals. And oh my God, look at th this is catastrophic. If you are looking at this, is this a lot of times you see hurricanes? It's a coastal event. This is beyond. This is inland areas all the way back to the Shenandoah Valley, the Piedmont. This would devastate Virginia. Th this would be the worst hurricane in Virginia. In the historical record, no question. And this is basically Harvey all over again. The only difference is Virginia and eastern North Carolina have really, really big trees with large root systems that would uproot and topple over in even a strong tropical storm force. Winds. Remember, this comes in the Category 4. It will take a long time to wind down. So even if you only have tropical storm winds left over, these rains with those winds under this duration amount of time would bring down so many trees into houses. You would have rivers overflowing. This would be a bleep show it, uh, it would be a complete and total bleep show on, on, on almost anything we haven't seen remember yesterday i did a lot of analogs i showed you isabel i showed you fran i showed you Hugo on some storms that were similar to this setup here's something that's different none of those storms had it stalling after it made landfall none of them this is going to dump a, a an amount of rain after it gets at wherever it stalls either here or down in the carolinas further south that you are not going to believe. And I would also still be keep a very, very close eye on this, even into southern Pennsylvania. I think maybe once you get north of, let's say, I-80, it's not getting up there. And I've seen a lot of people telling you, saying, oh, you might come up, you know, and hit and hit the north. It might hit New York and New England. No, it is not going to come up there, at least not in the next six, seven days. It's not because all those storms, again, as we talked about yesterday, have to move quickly. It's not going to happen. But th this rain here could easily get a little bit further north. If the Euro came in about 75 miles further to the west, to the east, between the GFS solution and where the Euro came in today, you would have a storm basically going up the Chesapeake Bay and stalling right in this area, which would push the extreme rainfall up to a, probably very close to I-80, and that area cannot take any more rain. So th th this is just in an unbelievable scenario that, that, we're, that we're seeing uh, over the top. I can show you the European ensembles here as well. This basically is the model being run 51 times. Um, with slightly different variation in the atmosphere to show you. And we've got landfall points basically anywhere from North Florida to it staying just off the coast. These two here are probably out to lunch. These two, these two are the only ones that would be basically no impact. There's a couple here who keep it just off the coast like the GFS does, uh, which would be significant beach erosion and possibly some damage on the shore, but nothing beyond that. And then pretty much everything else, the landfall and the stall. And, it, and this is just 
many, many, many days of heavy, heavy rain. If you are in any of these areas, again, you need to have a hurricane plan in place and a flood plan in place if you're inland, particularly in a low-lying area, area near a river, because this, this scenario is escalating very, very quickly here uh and and we may see something in this part of the world that we have not seen in decades and maybe over a century because again we have not seen storms stall like this so i'm not gross i will continue to update and have a good evening everybody and start getting prepared if you're in the warning areas